I've seen the mind put back into a wholeness and it's restored and people start living by faith and claiming all the promises that God has given them, especially the promises of salvation. There's absolutely no reason why we should spend our lives doubting salvation. We're not to be arrogant about it. We, I don't believe we're called to run around saying I'm saved and, and things like that. That's not an evidence of salvation. But neither are we called to be in doubt. And I'm not really sure. Several people came to me even yesterday. Oh, I'd just love to feel more secure about salvation. So I have chosen this morning to make another attempt to bring the issues of salvation through with crystal clarity. I believe Christians should have an assurance of salvation. They shouldn't have to spend their lives worrying, am I going to make it? Someone even laid on me the other day, you know, that old story about, what if I am crossing the road right toward the end and a truck comes by and hits me? And I might have made a mistake that morning. Will I be lost? I look at people in amazement when they say this to me. I say, it's the wrong question you're asking. Salvation is not about how well I am doing. It's not based on human performance. It's based on the divine human performance. I don't know what it's going to take to program our minds into hearing the word that God has asked Jesus Christ to resolve the sin problem, not us. And I'm reminded of those beautiful verses in in 1 John. And the witness is this, that God has given us eternal life. Did you hear that? He hasn't said you've got to sweat over this. He's given us eternal life. And this life, allow yourselves to hear it this morning, please. This life is in His Son. Are you grasping that? This life is in His Son. Jesus in human flesh is the only human being who's ever lived this life fully. That's given him the ability to become the source of life. It's in him. It's not some goal that I'm setting after to spend my life trying to get eternal life. This life is in his son. Say it to yourself over and over again today as you walk around. This life is in His Son. It's not some abstract reward that God's holding out here that I should chase after. It's in Jesus. He lived it. He earned the right to impart it to us. I'm still dealing with people who measure their success in the Christian life by how well they're doing, or God forbid, how well or how well others are not doing. If you're focused on others, I wish you luck. There's only one focus that counts when you're talking about eternal life. It's a focus on Jesus Christ. Not yourself, and certainly not on others. It's a focus on Jesus Christ. I mean, if you've got any doubts about eternal life, look at verse 12. He who tries hard enough and finally gets his act together will get eternal life. Is that how the Washington version reads? (laughs) Well, that's how many versions appear to read as I listen to what people are saying to me. Someone actually said to me yesterday, you know, I've decided I'm never going to be good enough. Oh, I said, praise God. Because you might finally realize there's only ever been one who was good enough. 
So, verse 12. If eternal life is in his Son, he who has the Son has the life. He who has the Son has the life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. And what life is being referred to there? Eternal life. Are you hearing it? Can we chalk this up for Washington camp today? It's interesting that the virtual church in Alabama, they were led by God this morning, without knowing from me, they were led by God to claim the promise that any double-mindedness on the camp here today would be set free. Without knowing that I'm addressing it here this morning, isn't God good? He who has the Son, not he who narrows his diet, Not he who becomes super careful about the edges of the Sabbath, as important as that may be. Not he who has doctrinal correctness, but he who has the Son. It's the bottom line with eternal life. We ought to be spending our days seeking to make sure that Jesus Christ is in us every single day. Because he who has the Son does not need to spend their lives saying, I wonder if I'm going to make it. It'll be a question that will never enter your mind. You'll have a quiet, abiding confidence because Jesus Christ is not only on the cross, he's now living in you. And you have that awareness and that trust and you're totally at peace in God's hands. You're actually free to live a life for God because he's taken the anxiety out of it. I probably should sit down right now and let you meditate just on those two verses. He who has the Son has the life. And if you don't have the Son today, You should be falling down on your knees in repentance and begging God to bring the living Christ into you through the Holy Spirit. This is the Spirit's special ministry. I don't know why we continue to separate the Spirit from Jesus. This is the Spirit of Christ. If you're receiving the Holy Spirit, you are receiving the life of Christ. Christ. 